the behemoth and Leviathan, the fifth principle of man. In Job 40 and 41, deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath and behold everyone that is proud and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud and bring him low and tread down the wicked in their place. He beholdeth all things. He is a king over all the children of pride. In the last video, we spoke about the uh, sevenfold man or the seven principles of man. And we went through Atma, the, the, the all spirit, the indivisible and the vehicles, the Buddha, the female form of Buddha. Um, and that's the spiritual, like spiritual wisdom, the spiritual side of the soul, the higher. There's the manas, which is the thinker or the mind. Um, the karma rupa, your desires, passions, and then so forth. We're going to concentrate on the manas, which is the fifth principle, and um, how it's influenced by the karma rupa. The fifth principle, or manas, the thinking part, the thinker, is actually divided into two into two pieces. And that's what uh, I want to go over. I'll blow this up a little bit so that um, you can see it better. Understanding this principle is going to help us tie everything, everything together. <clears throat> As I said, um, number six, the Buddha is pure universal spirit, and it's the female form of Buddha, the spirit portion of the human soul or spiritual wisdom. So it's female, so I've, I've uh, labeled it as a mother. Now, there's another mother that's at the bottom of the screen, and that's Kamarupa. It's desire, passions, um, emotions. So it's of a, of a female entity as well. In between, we have the manas, which is the mind, the thinker portion. So that would be male. So I have those labeled as father and father. The higher manas is your higher ego. Um, the immortal portion of the soul slash mind. And it gives you spiritual knowledge. And it labels you as a child of light. Because along with, if you... Um, if you join the mother and the father, the higher manas along with the higher mother, the Buddha, then you're a child of light. If you're dealing with the lower realms, your lower father would be the lower manas or your lower ego, the mortal or fleshly animalistic portion of the mind. And that is influenced or married to Kama Rupa, which, like I said, is your desires, your passions, and your emotions, and it's the animal portion of the human soul. And um, if you're a child of that mother and father, then you're a child of darkness. Um, if you're a child of light, the Bible says in Exodus to honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land and you'll also find in the Bible it tells you that in Luke if anyone comes to me and doesn't hate their father and their mother they cannot follow me so is it a discrepancy it's not because they're talking about two different sets of mothers and fathers in a portion of uh, on the on the origin of the world in the Nagamati library also along it I'm sure that it, it references it in uh, John and also a lot in Pistis Sophia but this particular says he hated his father the darkness 
and his mother, the abyss. I did not um, do anything with the text. That's exactly as it reads. He hated his father, the darkness, and his mother, the abyss. Um, they were talking about one creature, a mother-father combined, that made a creature. And that creature is yelled to bay off or I'll debate off. I want to show you this. It says, but he turned to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. You see, not the things of God, the higher manus, spiritual knowledge, no, the lower manus, the stuff that's all concerned about um, money, fame, power, glory, stuff, um, you know, all, all of that stuff. So Jesus saying to Peter, get behind me, Satan, we just um, referenced in uh, the origin of the world, Yaldabaoth, which is the Gnostic Satan, and I'm saying that the that that Satan or Yaldabaoth is a uh, mother, comma father, uh, lower Manus, and that gives you Yaldabaoth. But what's interesting is Peter. He said to Peter, "Get behind me, Satan." Um. That's ascending physical Jesus. He told his father, Peter, Peter, the lower manus, to get behind him. He was ascending up and he said, no, you, you stay back there and don't mess with me because you're concerned about the things um, in the fleshly, the worldly realm. And I'm not, I'm ascending ahead. Peter, um, Pater in Latin means father of this land. So when Jesus was speaking to Peter, he was saying, um, you know, that he was hating, hating and abandoning his father at that point, the lower menace. This is an ancient engraving of Yaldabaoth, or the Gnostic Satan, Pater. As you can see, it has a beast's head, and it's wrapped from its chest down with the snake, with the serpent, and it's combining the two. That's the, the fleshly mind up at the top being constricted at the bottom by the lower Kamarupa, the desires and passions which now lays the groundwork for me to speak about the Leviathan and the behemoth. The Book of Enoch says, on that day, two monsters will be produced, a female monster named Leviathan to dwell in the depths of the ocean over the fountains of water, but the male is called behemoth who occupies with his breast a waste wilderness named Dindane. Now, as I said, that picture we just looked at, he was wrapped up to his chest or his, or his breast. Um, the wilderness name Dindane, you can read Genesis 4. Um, it refers to the land of Nade or Nad. On the east of the garden, where the elect and the righteous dwell, and I besought the other angel that he should show me the might of these monsters, how they were produced on one day, the one being placed in the depth of the sea and the other in the mainland of the wilderness. And he spake to me, thou son of man, dost seek here to know what is hidden? Yes, I do seek. According to 2nd Ezra or Estrada's um, 
the, in the Apocrypha, God created on the fifth day the two great monsters. And if you look in the Bible, it'll tell you that on the fifth day, um, water creatures and birds were created. But according to Second Estratus, it says God created on the fifth day, the fifth principle, Manas, in my, in, in my point of view, day, the two great monsters, Leviathan and Behemoth, and he separated them because the seventh part of the world, the flesh, which was assigned to the water, could not hold them together. And he gave to the behemoth the part which was dried up on the third day. And he had the thousand mountains, which according to Psalms 10, furnish behemoth with the necessary food that he needs. To the Leviathan, God gave the seventh part of the earth, the flesh, filled with water. And he reserved it for the future to reveal by whom. And at what time the Leviathan and the behemoth should be eaten or consumed. In the Syriac Apocalypse of Baruch, the time is predicted when the behemoth will come forth from his seclusion on land and the Leviathan out of the sea and the two gigantic monsters created on the fifth day will serve food as the elect who will survive in the days of the Messiah. Let's get into some <clears throat> some behemoth stats. Behemoth is the plural form of behema, which means that it's a double beast. Very important because these are not two different beasts. These are two beasts coming together and making one one beast all inside of your head. In Job it says Surely the mountains, the lofty, proud, lower principles, bring him forth food, fuel, where all the beasts, the lower principles, of the field play. Behold, he drinketh up a river, and he hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up the Jordan, life-giving water, spirit, cerebral spinal fluid, in my estimations, into his mouth. He taketh it, consumes it for food or fuel, with his eyes, fleshly senses, lust, and his nose, pierceth through snares. His strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly, meaning the ability to reproduce more creatures. He has a tail of that of the cedar tree, his bones are as strong as pieces of brass, and his bones are likened to bars of iron. He has made for himself strong roots or a strong foundation to stand. Leviathan stats. Roots of the Leviathan, the name, is derived from to join or to unite. So they're definitely two different parts of one, one being creature or principle, not flesh and blood. We don't, we don't fight with flesh and bone principalities, principles in high places. But like, a, just like the behemoth being the plural form of the beast, the Leviathan means to join and unite. So. It makes sense. The Leviathan is listed in scriptures with passions or emotions of anger. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke. As out of a seething pot or a cauldron, his breath kindle coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. Lies in vicious words. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. His teeth are terrible and round about, relentless. His teeth are terrible and round 
about. Remember that for later. Canst thou put a hook or a hoop into his nose? Control, domesticate, tame. Will he make many supplications or convincements unto thee? Will I speak soft words unto thee? Tell you what you want to hear or tell the lower you what it wants to hear, i.e. tickle your ears. Rabbinical texts say he sends forth from his mouth a heat, desire, passion, emotion so great as to make all the waters in the deep boil. And if he would put his head into paradise, the higher manus, no living creature, children of the light, could endure the odor of him. Again, remember for later, he has a stinky odor, stinky essence. One can usually, um, not, it says can usually, it's supposed to say can't. One can't usually smell one's own stank. His abode is the Mediterranean Sea, and the waters of the Jordan fall into his mouth as it falls into the behemoth's mouth because they are one. And if you notice, we learned that this thing is supposed to be female, yet all of the scriptures say he, his abode. He sends forth his mouth. Can you put a hook or a hoop in his nose? Out of his mouth go burning lamps. He makes the deep. They are both combined in one because they both are titled as um, masters of the children of pride. Now I'm going to bounce back to Yael the Bayoth or Samael or Ael the Bayoth, Satan. <clears throat> Even though you can't see the picture, I'm going to go over a few things uh, that's in this engraving that uh, correlates with the Leviathan behemoth uh, duo. It has the head of a beast, lower manus, the lower ego, usually a lion, a horse, or a bird, which would represent pridefulness. Uh, sometimes you'll see ox or goats, horns, usually uh, represent stubborn, unwilling to change, and um, it's connected to the pridefulness, but also the ox and the goat, um, those are earth signs, so it stands for like earthly things, and especially the hoop and the nose, um, that's like a reference to to a bull and that's Taurus and Venus who's in charge of desires and and all of that stuff rules of the bull the Taurus so that has uh, that comes into play <clears throat> he holds the keys well no let me let me talk to this I, that one's after he's a winged creature he has wings so he's an angel slash an angle or a perception, a perspective um, messenger. It shows that the narrative is spiritual, mental, and not of the physical context. He has a snake restricting slash slave making coiled around his lower half from his chest down, as the scripture said which des denotes his desires, passions, emotions of the, of the lower man. He stands on top of the world, carving a little carving of the earth. He stands as master of the flesh, the earth, and there's two bands that go across it. And the bands are showing his restrictions and uh, man's servitude or slavehood have no other gods above me pronouncing that he is a lower god and there's another above him you shall serve feed give him fuel me with fear and trembling fuel him you shall serve him with fear and trembling this is uh again 
more planetary stuff that I'm really not going to get into, but um, all of the restrictions and the restraints that also goes along with the uh, the horns of Capricorn, Earth sign, sea goat, mm, so goat on top, sea, fish at the bottom, um, same thing, but that's Saturn, and Saturn stands for restrictions and uh, law and and all of that so it's the lower um i mean everything has polarity so saturn not bad but there are lower aspects of saturn and that's what it's talking about uh now the last thing that i want to point to is he holds the keys to hell is what the information is given and if you look at the picture if you find some good pictures you'll see it's actually there's two keys so he holds two keys to hell lower regions principles the lower manus and what's the other key for is it the key to heaven the higher manus and that's the food the food that the righteous get to eat because uh you know they've passed through yeah the leviathan shall be food for the righteous ones the food the manus the mind the understanding perception perspective and um also remember about the keys peter or peter satan holds the keys to heaven and jesus said i will build my church on you peter peter Sa satan lower manus it all makes sense to me now you know the bay off Satan, uh, all of these figures, and you read about those in the Bible too, they're called um, chimeras, chimeras, however you want to pronounce it, but they are, are beasts that people supposedly worshipped that were of different species. And I have up on the screen here for you, on the left, that's a Gnostic. That's that's a picture of Yaldabaoth. You see him with his wings, but he's a man's body, and the horns are coming out of his head, and he has a snake tail trailing behind him. That's Yaldabaoth, or a, a Chimera. On the right, that's an ancient... Is it from Greek? I believe it is. I think that's an ancient Greek statue that has the head of a lion, the tail of uh, a snake. He has teeth uh, going down like... Um, mm, like a reptile uh, teeth scales going down his back and then coming out of him his other head is a ram's head or a goat's head so that fits as well and then here's some more same thing snail um, snail snake snake or serpent um, bottom beastly head the extra horns coming out on the top wings it's not flesh and 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 blood and bone no principalities on high principles and then the last one there is a picture from some medieval uh, artwork and it has him in the temple and he's wearing a crown with his wings and his tail and his head is a lion and he's spitting out some fiery fiery darts so that is what the leviathan behemoth is they're they're a duo father lower mind driven by or influenced by the mother kamarupa on the bottom the behemoth the leviathan combined yaldabaoth saklaz samael or satan now that we're aware that uh, we're dealing with principalities and not beasts that live on the land or out in the ocean like a hippopotamus or, or a crocodile like has been um, speculated now that we've spoke about the esoteric meanings let's go and dig in like dora the explorer and find all of the exoteric things that we can correlate the earliest description of the ridge running along the floor the temporal horn of the lateral ventricle 
comes from the Venetian anatomist Julius Caesar Aranzi, 1587, who likened it first to a silkworm and then later to a seahorse or a sea monster. A silkworm is the larva of a caterpillar of the silk moth. And in Joel 2.25 it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. Again, I think that this is referring to the, the feast that the righteous get to eat once going through those two lower realms. And the feast of the Leviathan. And that little worm was describing the hippocampus. And the hippocampus is derived from the Greek hippocampus, hippos meaning horse, and campos meaning sea monster. So not a hippopotamus, but yes, a hippocampus. The hippocampus controls memory, learning, and spatial orientation, thinking, it's the thinker, while the amygdala helps the brain to process emotions and attach emotional information to and fro the hippocampus, and then attaches emotional information to memories. Emotional responses such as love, aggression, panic, fear, worry, outrage, all of those things are regulated by the amygdala, the leviathan or desire or passions portion of the beast, and the hippocampus being the behemoth, the thinker part, jointly together they work. You know what? Now that I'm sitting here thinking of uh, the silkworm, a Bible scripture popped up into my head. Uh, there's one that says somewhere that, um, um, oh, that their worm never dieth or the worm that never dies. Uh-huh. The silkworm, hippocampus, the seahorse. The hippocampus god was fashioned as a, as a seahorse. It had the head of a horse and the body of a fish. Hippocampi have appeared in numerous ancient cultures and they're usually associated with gods of the sea. The crest of the waves are believed to be where the hippocampi were created. Around 750 BC in the Etruscan civilization, hippocampi were found in drawings on tomb walls. The hippocampus were believed to provide passage on a sea voyage into the next world, into the higher manus. And in the fourth century BC, the patron god of Tyrus was often depicted riding a winged hippocampus accompanied by two dolphins. Poseidon, Greek legend, and Neptune and Roman legend were associated as well with the hippocampi. Uh, again, it comes into, uh, yes, definitely Neptune, the fish. Here's a cooler one that is on top of a church here in the United States. You know, there's some of these around where I live too, and I was like, what is that? And why would they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're on top of like the Catholic ones. They, they knew because they had all of the books and all of the um, things in their, in their vault, in their Vatican library. But at any rate, Hippocampus, uh, Leviathan, Behemoth. Now, since we're speaking about the hippocampi, hippocampus, and the amygdala, that means that we have to talk about the limbic system. And here we get a lot of clues that uh, Dora, Dora, Dora the Explorer can pop into her backpack. The limbic system encircling the upper part of the brain surrounds the corpus colostrum and is a ring of structures on the inner border of the cerebrum. Rings and rings and more rings, keeping things in order. The floor of the dicephalon that constitutes the limbic system, limbic meaning border, 
the so-called limbic lobe is a rim of cerebral cortex or cerebral cortex on the medial surface of each hemisphere um, it includes the cingulate gyrus which means belt there is a scripture and if I can find it it'll pop up on the screen about how quote unquote um, God is speaking to Job and asks him um, if you can uh, walk the beast on a leash if you can put it on a rope or a fishing line or yes yes we can with the cingulate gyrus it's a belt which is in the temporal lobe below and then we have the hippocampus the seahorse that we spoke a little bit about it's the portion parahippocampal gyrus that extends into the floor of the lateral ventricle the donate gyrus donate equals toothed or teeth round about again I hope that I have the scripture popping back up but that lies between the hippocampus and the parahippocampal gyrus or belt or leash the amygdala it's composed of several groups of neurons located close to the tail of the caudate nucleus and there's the septal nuclei there's the mammillary bodies of the hypothalamus um, the two nuclear of the thalamus uh, I'm not going to talk about those I'm going to speak about those ones that we just touched on and uh, the seventh one the olfactory bulb the olfactory bulbs are flattened bodies of the olfactory pathway that rest on the crib form plate it does look remarkably like a caterpillar the amygdala and the hippocampus there in that picture looks exactly like a little caterpillar uh, with a tail that swoops and goes up around and surrounding our little caterpillar friend is the cerebral cortex and the word cortex means bark as in tree bark and if you look the tail end is the part that's touching the tree bark and Leviathan's tail was of that of a cedar tree another clue the cortical hem is a signaling center that generates bone morphogenic proteins and acts as an organizer for the hippocampus and in Job 40 it says his bones are strong pieces of brass his bones are like bars of iron located at the junction of the river's mouth of the choroid plexus and the hippoc and the hippocampus and I was thinking that is that possibly why the woman that was afflicted with blood ie a spirit disorder she just wished to reach out and touch the hem of his garment and then she would be healed I think so now we have to also look deeper into that choroid plexus the choroid plexus is a network of capillaries and specialized edemial cells that are found in cerebral ventricles in the brain this plexus serves two roles for the body it produces cerebral fluid and provides a toxin barrier to the brain and other central nervous system tissue it's that lady reaching out to touch the hem and also in Job 40 it says behold he drinketh up a river and hasteth not he trusteth that he can draw up the Jordan life-giving water spirit cerebral spinal fluid into his mouth another player in this the olfactory bulb it recognizes smells and is part of the limbic system that deals with emotion memory and feelings when you smell certain things that bulb makes a connection between the smell and what you're feeling or experiencing at the time or have in the past 
And in Job 41, it says, if he would put his head into paradise, no living creature could endure the odor of him. And in Job 40, it says, he taketh it, consumes his food or fuel, with his eyes, flesh, senses, lust, his nose pierceth through the snares. The little head to the caterpillar there, or your uh, kamarupa. The amygdala is a limbic system structure that's involved in our emotions and motivations, passions. The lateral nucleus is the main entry area to the amygdala since it receives sensory information, auditory, sound, visual, sight, taste, touch, and pain from various brain regions. It's involved in the processing of emotions, pain, fear, anger, rage, wrath. Primarily in these or other emotions are related to averse or unpleasant stimuli. It's also known to be involved in emotions eliciting by, elicited by appetite, lusts, uh, by the reward, uh, making it a reward center. Stimuli such as overindulgence, causing a problem with self-satisfying, self-soothing. It can lead to addictions, drugs, alcohol, shopping, um, desiring fame, fortune, adulations, more than what you need, uh, being sexually promiscuous, overeating, etc., etc., etc. Um, it's also closely associated in fear conditioning, whether it be something physical that you've been through traumatic or something that you've been told and you believe is true. So real or unreal, as in, I am the Lord, your God, and you shall serve me with fear and trembling. Yeah, serve it up. Serve it to them. Yeah, don't, do not, don't feed the beast. Don't feed the beast. Just my, my own um, thought here. When I see amygdala, amygdala, I immediately hear in my head, Mary, 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 Mary. So Mary of Magdala, her name was Magdalene, which means woman from or a person from Magdala. When I see amygdala, I, I, I hear Mary of Magdala, which is amygdala minus the Y. She was cured of seven demons. Were those seven demons pride, greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth? And also, Magdala in Aramaic, it means Tower of the Fishes. So, more fishes. Now, all of the things that I've been showing you are mainly out of uh, Job 40 and 41. But if we read the whole, uh, back from the beginning of it, in Job 2, we read, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast to his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without a cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone in his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Now, back to Job speaking to God. 
well, in Psalms, it says, there go the ships, there's that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. In Job, it says, behold now, behemoth, which I made with thee. Uh, none is so fierce that dare stir him up, who is able to stand before me. Can thou draw out the Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord? Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God? Or can thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold everyone that is proud, and abase him. Look on everyone that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. I will also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him provideth him with his sword. Um, the whole time the narrative is that Job was speaking with God and God was talking about all of these these creatures and these things but I realized as I was putting it all together oh yeah it's a, I think it's in second Kings that's a second Kings deal again we're good old quote-unquote God's up there Satan's around he was like oh me 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 let me go do something and they agreed to let Satan come down and be a lying spirit and the voice in people's ears so same situation um if you look at the scriptures it, it says i made thee this is your lower your your lower mind right um i will also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee he that made him provideth him with his sword his words which are first thoughts which are in that mind, which you need to use from the higher man. It's not the lowest thinker. But um, yeah, as I was reading it, I was like, this isn't quote unquote in context, God, Satan. Job wasn't talking to, to God. He was talking to Yaldabaoth or Satan or the beast at the time, because it says, wilt thou also disannul my judgment and condemn me just so that you can be righteous? And he's like, do you have an arm of God like me? Do you have a voice of thunder like me? Are you majestic and excellent like me? If you are, stand up and say something and do something about it. So, uh, yeah, I thought that was, that was pretty cool. And then also, wow, Job's wife, she had it all the time. And Job, too, in the beginning, before all of this discussion and stuff, she, she, knew what she, she knew what the deal was. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die already. Job's wife told him how to handle it immediately. Turn against the lower God and die to the lower principles. Just do it already. Just get it over with and die. Yes, even though it was all different uh, principles and aspects of Job, um, Job, Job had a job to do that that he was taking too long to do, but. Um, that in context was actually Job speaking with Satan, Samael, Yaldabaoth, uh, or I'm going to dub it the Behemothan, the lower manus mind um, coupled with the Kamarupa, the desire. That's what was speaking to Job. Yes. 
which brings us right back to uh, this little guy again same area that we're talking about hey little guy hey there's a little guy x-rayed view remember we do not fight with flesh and bone but with principalities in high places and you certainly do have free will you can be a child of darkness or chaos um, the manas karma rupa unless you hate or abandon your mother comma lower desires passion and your father the lower manas or the lower ego you cannot be a disciple of mine so says jesus so again free free will child of darkness and chaos Mwah. with the horns ah or a child of light atma buddha manas yes all together trinity yes that's what we want she looks beautiful there honor your mother and father honor your mother the buddha spiritual wisdom and father your higher manas spiritual knowledge that your days may be long we do not fight with flesh and bone no behemoths wasn't one then that they were talking about no leviathan wasn't one then when they were talking about not one now either not flesh and bones principalities and this one in particular is the lower fifth and the fourth joined together to make a demon seed or a behemoth then this channel is viewer fueled so please help spread the light subscribe if you haven't already please hit the like sh uh, a thumbs up button share comment donate towards future creations and um the next time that you watch videos watch it all the way through to the end that helps the youtube algorithm as well um everything together will help more people to become awakened and heal themselves it's up to us when i was a child i thought like a child demons and talking snakes and people getting eaten by whales and spit back up and still surviving demons and devils with horns and tails but when i became a man i put away childish things on a side note they didn't use J back in the day so Job's name was actually Job um, or it would have been a Y or an I but at any rate if you read it backwards it says boy so get the job done and put away the childish things much love strength healing knowledge double portions of wisdom for all knowledge that you gain Love yourselves and love each other unconditionally.